I told someone tonight I was going to bring a nose diaper. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it seems like sickness has gone through our church family, and it has uh, hit several of the people in the choir as well, but uh, they've uh, all come, and we're going to share the good tidings of germs tonight, maybe. I don't know. So good having you all with us this evening and this uh, cold, cold night. Uh, hopefully, we can bring some cheer and some warmth just by being together. Tonight, before we get started, we have the lighting of the Christmas candle and Christ candle. Um, it says Rob and Susan, but they are two that are under the weather. And uh, so tonight we have people that have come forward to stand in in their place. On the eve of our Christmas celebration, we celebrate the birth of Jesus and rejoice in his coming to us. We light all the candles of the Advent wreath. First, we light the purple candle for hope, because Jesus is our hope. Second, we light the purple candle for love, because Jesus is love. Third, we light the pink candle for joy, because Jesus brings joy. Fourth, we light the purple candle for peace, because Jesus is our hope and peace. Finally, we light the white center candle. This is the Christ candle. Jesus is born. Jesus has come. Jesus is our salvation. The white Christ candle reminds us that Jesus is the spotless Lamb of God, sent to wash away our sins. His birth was for his death. His death was for our birth. John 1, 29 says, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John 3, 1 through 8 says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night, and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that art, thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the spirit. Jesus Christ is our hope, he is our peace. Jesus Christ is our joy, he is love, pure, holy, undying love. 2 Corinthians 9.15 says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Hillary. Folks are still coming in, so that's a nice sign. They're either cold or uh, thought that this was someplace else. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And, uh, but folks still coming in. Let's start tonight with a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity we have to share in a special occasion the center focus of the Christian faith, uh, Jesus born of a virgin, uh, dwelling among us, being our Emmanuel. I pray, Father, tonight that you'd bless all the things that take place. Uh, Father, I pray that you'd be with those that are not able to be with us tonight. But thank you, Lord, tonight that we're able to live stream this service, and many who would have liked to have been here uh, will be able to join with us. Thank you for the beautiful music we hear of the children. Uh, always a joy to hear voices of young children in a service. We delight in that. Thank you, for, Father, for providing that. Now I pray that you bless the rest of this evening and these folks who have come. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, Drew plays infant holy, infant loving. 
For hundreds of years, Israel, God's chosen people, languished in bondage and darkness, yearning for a new day when their Creator would send a Messiah to deliver them from their misery. As all people are wont to do, the children of Israel repeatedly chose their own path for living, abandoning the invitation of their God to be united in a life of devotion and praise. Such choices prolonged their night of anguish as they longed for a better day. But in God's perfect timing, a messenger was sent, proclaiming words of hope. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. A new day was about to dawn. Yes, weeping might endure through the night, but joy was to come with the morning. and hopelessness continued as Israel awaited the promised Messiah, heaven's perfect gift to the world. The perfect gift. How does one patiently await or prepare for the arrival of such a gift? All of us, children and adults alike, can recall that moment when we received the perfect gift, that long-anticipated or unexpected gift which exceeded our fullest expectations. It was that hope to which the children of Israel were clinging as they awaited their promised king. 
Faithful prophets continued their bold proclamations of the Lord, offering words of encouragement and hope as God directed them. Those walking in darkness have seen a great light. Those dwelling in a land of deep darkness, on them has a light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And yet they waited. Even with words of hope and promise, Israel's long night continued as the people yearned for the dawning of a new day, the arrival of heaven's gift, the coming of a divine Messiah. The prophet Isaiah foretold of a time when a virgin would conceive and give birth to a son. This child would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. In due time, there was a young maiden named Mary who was pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child, conceived through the Holy Spirit, just as Isaiah had foretold. An angel was sent to Mary and one to Joseph, confirming that this was indeed God's plan. They were to be the earthly parents of the long-awaited Messiah, the promised King of Israel. He was to be heaven's gift to the world. They were to name him Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census was to be taken of the entire Roman world. Everyone was to return to their ancestral town to be registered. So Joseph went to Bethlehem in Judea, the city of David, because he belonged to the house and line of King David. He went there with Mary, to whom he was pledged in marriage, and who was expecting a child. While they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to give birth. Mary took her firstborn son and wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there had been no room for them in the inn. 
Messiah had been born in an unlikely place in an unlikely way. It was the prophet Micah who, hundreds of years earlier, had foretold that this divine king of Israel would be born in the tiny and remote village of Bethlehem. Historic prophecies and divine plans were now intersecting on this night as Mary, Joseph, and the newborn baby resided in a Bethlehem stable. This was heaven's gift, love's purest light. As the Gospel writer John wrote, In him, Jesus, was life, and that life was the light for all people. The Word, Jesus, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father above, full of grace and truth.
on the night that Jesus was born, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flocks. For them, it was an ordinary night on a Judean hillside. Little did they know what was happening in the nearby village of Bethlehem. Suddenly, the night sky was filled with light. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. Go, and you will find the baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. In an instant, this night became a night like no other for working shepherds. A great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all with whom his favor rests. shepherds said to one another, We should go and see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried off to Bethlehem. There they found Mary, Joseph, and the newborn baby, who was lying in a manger. After they had seen him, they left the stable and began to spread the word about what they had witnessed. All who heard their words were truly amazed at what the shepherds had said. The shepherds returned to their fields, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. What they had witnessed was precisely what the angels had promised they would see. But Mary, the divinely appointed mother of Jesus, treasured up all these things as she pondered them in her heart. Before her, in a lowly manger, was the newborn King of the world.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem in search of this young child. They arranged for a visit with King Herod in Jerusalem, asking, Where is this one who has been born King of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. After consulting with the chief priests and teachers of the law, King Herod directed the Magi to go to Bethlehem, which the prophet had long ago foretold as location for this one whom they sought. The king said to them, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you have found him, report back to me so that I too may come and worship him. As they departed, the star they had seen in the east went before them, guiding their journey until it stopped over the place where the young child was. There they found the Christ child and his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. How does one respond when receiving the gift of a lifetime, the perfect gift, heaven's gift? The prophet asked, with what shall I come before the Lord? What does the Lord require of me? The perfect gift deserves a response. Maybe the proper response is found in the answer Jesus gave later in his life to the teachers of the law when asked, what is the most important, important of all the commandments? His answer, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. A few days after his birth, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to Jerusalem to de dedicate him to the Lord. While there, Simeon and Anna, elderly saints of God, gave witness that this baby was indeed the one who had been promised through the ages. In response, they gave thanks to God and worshiped this newborn child, the long-awaited king, the fulfillment of the ancient prophecies. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, the Word made flesh. Messiah, heaven's perfect gift to the world. Come, let us adore him.
who stepped in this morning to help us out when she was missing. So, also, I'm really happy she was able to help us out. cantata tonight um, having a cold I sang bass notes I've never heard come out of my mouth that was so wonderful I thought I can go an octave below the note anything above uh, I couldn't hit but uh, what a great job choir coming together at the last minute and uh, we appreciate you coming and listen to it kudos to Drew for taking uh, such a monumental task on with uh, people that think that the notes on a page are just people climbing up and down a fence rail and um, trying to bring something to glorify the Lord through that. Thank you, Drew. We appreciate it. And for all those that participated, um, I think I recruited a couple and others recruited a couple and some lassoed and tied their legs together. But we got enough here and thank the Lord for that. And uh, Dave, so good to see you got a big group up there that all have come. How many of you with Dave and Lori up there? Man, look at that. I didn't know, Dave, you had that many friends. That's wonderful. <laughs> Amen. So good to have you with us. Uh, we sang so good tonight and were so attractive that people from Florida came to visit us, right? Is that right, Bree? Okay. Amen. Good to have you with us, too. And I see Stan's uh, sons back there in the back. So good to have you with us. Amen. Last time I saw you had a carpenter's belt on or an electrician's belt or something like that. Amen. Good to have you with us as well. And then the other folks that are visiting with us, honored guests, we do appreciate you being with us this evening um, as uh, uh, we present what typically is just a candlelight service. Uh, we come together, we have a few specials, and then uh, we light candles to end the event. Uh, this year, we decided to do a Christmas cantata, and uh, uh, you are our first people to go through that. So thank you for coming. Um, if you ordered flowers, um, these that are up here, uh, Glenda asked that you take them tonight if you have opportunity and room in your car to take them. But she did say that if you ordered them, to make sure that you take the ones you ordered. Um, I can't tell, but I understand that there are multiple colors up here. So make sure you took the ones that you ordered if you leave tonight. Uh, this season is a wonderful opportunity for us to get together. Um, I read the other day that um, uh, UK uh, now, um, Christianity has uh, moved to number two religion in the uh, UK. Um, America's fast approaching the same dilemma. Um, as we sit here tonight in Sydney, Ohio, uh, heart of America, traditional values, believing the things that our parents taught us when we grew up, and we teach them to our kids because we just knew that to be right, found it in the Bible, heard it from our parents, heard our parents talk about our grandparents that embraced it, and now we're privileged to pass it along to our kids, and we encourage them to pass it along to their kids as well. In a night when many people, I read today that more people now associate Christmas with a holiday celebration than with Christmas as Christ's birth in America. I appreciate sincerely that you've come tonight to honor the one who this day was chosen to remember, and that is Christ. I often think of my own heart where would I be 
without the Lord? What would my life's purpose be? I have found that I can be successful in business and I found that I can be successful at other things, but none of them are fulfilling. Ultimately, all of them end in less than what I aspired. The only thing that I have ever found that is given purpose in life, not just here, but after this life, is living for Jesus. And this celebration, as we cut the eve of Christmas, is about the one who gives real purpose to life. If you don't know him as your personal savior, uh, you've missed out on living. Because as the Apostle Paul wrote, for to me to live is Christ. And the purpose that he gives to us is not only to reveal him through us, but to share the joy that we have because of him with others. And that's my indeed my pleasure tonight to share with you, though not a Christmas song, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. And I hope that you know him tonight in a personal way. Many of you who are church family with me uh, know for many, many months, we have prayed for Brenda's um, a sister-in-law who needed a kidney. Do you mind, Dan? Uh, tonight, Dan is with us, and Dan is the donor of that kidney, and uh, we're so honored to have you tonight. What a blessing. He is accompanied by his wife. <laughs> I probably should make mention of that because Dan didn't make that decision without consultation, I'm sure. Amen. I've made a few of those decisions without con uh, consultation, and I have this bump on the back of my head <laughs> that said, the second time, you better think before you speak. Amen. But good to have you folks with us tonight. What a blessing. Well, uh, tonight we um, are missing quite a few different folks that are with us. Um, I was not here uh, during the time when this evening always, always um, included a song from uh, Ken, and Ken would uh, sing this wonderful song. Uh, through the years that I've been here, it's been, the torch has been carried by uh, other people, Lisa, uh, most often. And uh, she's not with us this evening either. And Stan has graciously offered to share this song, O Holy Night, a tradition every Christmas Eve. And I pray that you'd be with him and think of him as he sings tonight. stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth the thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Cry. 
Christ was born. All night divine. All night. All night Led by the light, a face serenely beaming with glowing hearts, by his cradle we stand. So led by light of a star sweetly gleaming, here came the men from the Orient land, the King of kings lay thus in lowly manger in all our trials, born to be our friend. He knows our need to our weakness. Stranger, behold your king before the lowly bend. Behold your king. Truly he taught us to love one another, the love and love, and his gospel is peace. Change shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. The Thank you, Stan. Good job. Great song. Well, uh, one of our uh, intentional um, objectives on Christmas Eve is to be short. I know Baptist Church, that's a pl bad place to start. Short. 
Um, but uh, we want to let you get home to be with your families and a celebration there. We conclude tonight with uh, the lighting of the candles. And after all the candles are lit or for the kiddos turned on, uh, then we'll sing one verse of Silent Night. We like to make a big circle. So if you just kind of follow the people that know where they're standing out there, and uh, then we have um, members of the diaconate. I believe some are going to start on that side and some are going to start on this side. And then just light the candle of the person next to you as we get started tonight. <laughs> have a wax candle that you don't hold it this way, you hold it this way. <laughs> Thank you. Have you got something back there to light? Yes. Sure. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great evening. Thanks so much for being with us. As you leave, you can place your candles in the buckets or pans. Merry Christmas.
are you tonight? Good. Thank you, sir. Your dress looks pretty.